Hey guys, uh, this video is going to be more of an installment of stuff I've been thinking about working with recently and it deals primarily with CSS and the idea of scaling CSS and working on a team. Um, recently I've actually joined the team at Dribbble and I'm beginning to be more of a team, have a mindset more of a team focus and with that I noticed um, in that writing CSS is hard when you're not doing it yourself, when you're not with, you know, if you're, if you're needing to communicate something to someone else, naming something is probably the hardest thing in programming and long time CSS has always been more or less doing that. So you'd almost describe what it is you're, you're styling and, you know, hope that transcends down to a modular level so other people can understand it as well when they enter the same space as you uh, but oftentimes that's hard to scale and you find yourself repeating certain things like display nuns or um, modifying certain buttons just because they're not quite right for a certain type of design or application so I've been researching and um, some colleagues of mine had shared some articles with me that dealed with more or less the atomic design principle or functional styles. And the idea of that is more or less making a class on a um, actual HTML element that really only does one thing. So you're, you're only generating a certain style on that specific element to do this specific thing. And there's a lot of argument against this because your, your HTML starts to look kind of crazy. Like you're almost writing inline styles, which is, you know, makes kind of a modern designer almost cringe. Um, I personally getting into this is actually a struggle because I've written CSS for so long, a certain way, kind of in an object oriented pattern. Um, so by example, I could show you what I have here. Maybe I'll move me over. Um, so on the right, we're kind of describing just a block that's an author card, so to speak. So it has me, my image, uh, my name, and just a quick description about what I do and stuff. But oftentimes we'd name a class that describes exactly what this is. And as you can see, we, one method of CSS, granted there's tons out there. So there's like different styles of writing, like smacks, B or BIM, B E M, um, and then just other types of frameworks for writing CSS that more or less are an approach to streamline the the concept of writing CSS. So you can do it in a collaborative environment, in particular. So on your own, this may not be one of those things that really you need to focus on if you're only generating say your own website that only your hands touch but once you start introducing a lot of people into the mix that need to touch the style sheets as well you might see where functional styles or atomic styles as i'll refer to them come in handy and i'm beginning to see you know what all the fuss is about there's articles that i just showed previously this, this was written year, like three years ago already which is you know it's been out for some time um, but it's becoming more of the buzz lately as opposed to using something like Bootstrap or Foundation or Bulma, which I've been using in other videos that kind of already have design laid out. So it's, think of it as a utility first kind of paradigm as opposed to these are components you use, this is how it looks, take it and run with it. So this is the way we've traditionally kind of come. So we've, we've pick point A, um, specific class, add it to a div, and then use that div to style the things within it. It kind of encapsulates this component, which is great. It works. Um, but then you start writing CSS over and over for different components, and you're repeating things like margin, you're repeating border radiuses, um, borders, background colors, all this stuff that you can actually probably just define once in a style sheet and use later as time goes simply by adding another class. So in HTML, you can add as many classes as you want here. You can add like margin, I don't, margin all, zero, margin right, one, you know, that's that's functional styles right there. But essentially you can add, say, author, if you're continuing this path, light, I don't know, maybe changing a 
color or something at this point I can't spell but wow there we go so maybe with JavaScript or something you add that if the author is I don't know new to the app or whatever you're building um, some stuff like that you can do and that's perfectly valid it's semantic it reads the way you know you would think author bio tells me hey this is probably about someone and it's got a biography or blurb about the person which is great that's you know kind of a foundational approach to css you want it to describe what it is you're styling in a sense uh, that's where we get into semantics and front-end architecture so it's kind of a study of um, making sure html reads the way it should um, Here's from the spec. Uh, it says authors are encouraged to use a class attribute values that describe the nature of the content rather than the values describe uh, the desired presentation of the content. So there's no real reason we do this as, as pointed here. It's kind of just a, a trend that carried over. It's just something that we do now, um, but that's kind of shifting in the mindset of scalability. So enter utility first frameworks and these more or less are the principles of making a class that does one thing and through that there's some limitations there's also some caveats that uh, where one class say a button class you're probably going to repeat that so you can create a button class that's a functional style or atomic style uh, but other than that you can do stuff with say this this um, framework here called tachyons uh, it's a huge library of just CSS that does one thing. So the idea is you import the style sheet. This front page probably won't tell me much, but um, I have an example here in a code pin. Um, but the idea is all these classes do one thing. So um, this is a max width of six right here, I think. And the width here is like 100. Um, you can have a border bottom with just this class. You can have black color that is half transparency with this class margin top of two um, so all these this framework kind of is opinionated quite quite a bit but um, you can modify it to your heart's content you can even roll your own functional styles depending on your own app so the idea is to just make it scalable so that you only define this class once in your project and you can always re reference it in your your style sheet so you're not repeating stuff like you do in our first example over here Let me move this again um, so like margins in particular or padding all that stuff can be der derived you know and separated into its own functional style that can be appended to an object and used throughout your entire app. So why do this? Obviously it's for a variety of reasons, I would say it's more for performance in my opinion. That's kind of what we're going for on our team. Um, right now, when you write CSS, you're grouping it by components. So when you're des designing maybe a one-off page somewhere, you're just, name spacing it out maybe by the body class or something and doing tons of styles within that class using SAS. I'm, I'm thinking uh, of a nested approach. And then that ultimately creates tons of lines of CSS that you have to later render, you know, and wait for your, your page to load, which your browser does when it first paints the screen. And then you're just, you're left with all these lines of CSS that may or may not get used again. And, you're using classes granted uh, but they're not reusable in in essence so that's kind of a stipulation with this whole thing and i've got tons of articles i'm going to share with you guys about it but it's more or less just an this is an approach to just kind of thinking um get get thinking this way because it's way more scalable in the end and i'm really digging it so far but um all these articles have great points about the idea of utility first um, classes and functional styles as I keep calling them um, like things that could be grouped together in this article mentioned uh, font size and line height text transform and letter spacing oftentimes you're grouping these things already on elements you're styling so background color and color are obvious so if you're setting a background of dark of some sort of color 
chances are the color of the text needs to be light so it can be the contrast is there you know um stuff revolving around positioning can be you know taken out and put in functional styles you can have nudge spaces that do this thing um and it, it idea of this we can go into components on tachyons and really show you a valid use case um actually it's the docs so what kind of sold me is is the idea of basically defining a grid is is if you think of defining a grid in bootstrap that's basically functional styles um, so you have the class of row and then the class of column however many wide you want and you're just repeating that throughout your, your app. Um, but think bigger than that. So in this sense, if we wanted to do um, spacing on this Tachyon specific library, we can get into doing things that revolve around just actual set parameters of spacing. So padding in particular is a big one or margin. Um, so I'm thinking when I get down to the code here, this is just kind of showing what's going on. Uh, but they have all this different scaling of um, modifiers. So you can have PA, which stands for padding all around a object. And then you can define what that spacing is based on this seven, seven uh, step scale tachyons uses. So I'm, I'm not all in on tachyons because the whole seven number scale isn't quite for me. I'd probably rather go one to 10. So like padding... PA1 would be padding of 10 pixels around, and then PA100, go go from 0 to 100, I should say. So it'd be, let me just type it out here. So if we did change the view to move this, uh, maybe we have a container and item. One, two, three, four. I didn't really need to do the item thing, but if we did PA 10 or like 100, PA, I don't know, 60. PA 40, PA 20. So something like that. So we can just do 10, 20, 40. I am not used to this keyboard. So 100. And then say we want like just a different background. Black. Text white. So these are my own functional styles that I like to do. I'm just doing different stuff here just so you can see the difference. And some functional styles will get this down to like two letter things. So you could essentially maybe do text white as TW, but I don't think that reads as well it's kind of less the traditional approach so especially if you're trying to describe what it is that's happening um, but things like padding and stuff kind of make sense in this idea so let me get this going i can probably speed through this All right, so we have our classes defined here, and all I'm doing is just adding padding. I'm changing the colors of these as well as the um, yeah the background color and the color of the text. So we're doing that all with just three classes on each each um, block, and that's basically it. So the idea of functional styles is at any point when your app scales, you always have access to these classes instead of writing something that's like um, article. And then inside that you put padding of like 20 pixels 
which works, but it's also, it's scoped to that thing. So you're not using that. You can't access that everywhere and only, you know, have access just to just the padding thing on it. So that's where this is becoming powerful. And there's frameworks like Tachyons that are out. There's one called base CSS um, that uh, kind of started the trend. So it's kind of like Tachyons, but I would say less less things. Tachyons covers like all of it and goes crazy with some of the ideas and ideologies of what you can do with this. So components, for example, show some ideas of what you can create. Like this is all article list. This is all within the Tachyons class naming convention. So you have an article here. It has a max width of, I would say, the 70% or so. Um, and then you can just kind of go nuts. So all the styles on the, on the right here indicate what's going on. And it's, it's pretty cool. So I think where this, where this plays, like I said, I keep saying it, it really comes into picture when you're trying to scale and working with others. Um, so when everyone has an idea of what classes they can use, on a particular element, they start to use them all at the same time and everything gets leaner. So the style sheet in particular, it just, you know, you can delete so much code that you don't need. Um, but there are, you know, caveats where you do need to style specific things um, that don't fall into all the classes that you can add as an example um, to your CSS. So maybe you need a spacing of like, one pixel or two pixels you can you can define that as a um, style a functional style but sometimes you might just get away with writing it in line which sounds dirty uh, but if you were to just you know style text indent maybe you could do something like that and get away with it um, you might think about adding that as a functional style later i think it's going to be relative to your app or what it is you're building if you find yourself repeating code, add it. If you don't, then maybe it's just a one one off use case. So they you know, that's kind of a idea principle that we like to use, that I like to use. Um, the same is true for classes that might entail JavaScript. Um, that's where I draw the line. So say you want to render something but modify it interactively with JavaScript, you probably throw a JS flag in front of it and then call it something that's descriptive so someone knows um, what to do with it. So that helps me identify that, hey, that's something someone's using for JavaScript, which is usually targeted elsewhere. Um, so you want to leave that alone. But all in all, if you can kind of Frankenstein these approaches, you can come up with something that's really scalable, really lean, um, and just easier to use for multiple parties. So. I think that's about it summarizing all this stuff keep an open mind with it it's gonna feel dirty when you're writing it um, I would just definitely try maybe getting your hands dirty with this tachyons library or base CSS um, there's a new one out called tailwind at CSS and it's utility first um, they the guy behind I think who works on Laravel quite a bit um, Adam here um, built this with some friends or something like that um, but it's it's kind of an unopinionated approach. It's not a UI kit like a foundation or a bootstrap. So they, they specifically say that in this intro. Um, but the idea is to use these components to build something that is relative to your own project as opposed to creating, say, a bootstrap panel class that has that one look that we all are familiar with. Um, and then you, you'll stop seeing sites that start to look the same, you know? So that's kind of what's exciting me about it. I'm, I'm so sick of seeing bootstrap based sites or sites that just, you know, you could, you could see it like a, you know, open book, uh, know what's already running under the hood as a designer. So I think that about sums it up. I'm going to add a bunch of lists, listings of articles that you should read maybe about this. Um, some deal with, uh, foundational things like semantics others deal with just this overlying functional CSS approach um, what kind of sold me on it is seeing some stats that I found in Adam the same guy we just saw he wrote an article on this um, 
called what is it called I can't quite remember but basically there's stats that come come bundled with this blog post that it shows how many text colors are, are in use on live production sites right now and how many font sizes like why would you need 59 font sizes why would you need 70 on convert kit um, the same is true for github there's 163 colors and I don't recall how many text colors I remember just seeing on github it's like usually black and white so it's kind of it's kind of a um, you know, a shock to see how many big apps out there are using some really bloated CSS that they don't need to. Like how many times they declare display none on, on certain properties, how many text colors they use, um, background colors, all that stuff. It's just kind of amazing. So this is an attempt to try to solve that. Um, I'm still leaning on both sides of it to where I'm used to writing CSS in kind of an object oriented way, but um, I'm, I'm leaning towards writing it this way for the sake of scalability. So I recommend you, maybe you do the same. So I'll leave it up to you to decide. Hopefully you like this video. Um, if you want to you know, start a discussion about it, feel free to comment. I'd love to chime in and express my own ideas if you have any strong ones or anything like that. But I think that's it. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next videos coming up.